All right, welcome to Starting Scripture, a uh, reading of the Bible with Katura. And today I'm reading day 36, uh, Exodus 15 and 16, Leviticus 11, and Psalm 71. So Exodus 15, a song of deliverance. Then Moses and the people of Israel sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. He has hurled both horse and rider into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has given me victory. This is my God, and I will praise him. My father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior. Yahweh is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and army has he has hurled into the sea. The finest of Pharaoh's officers are drowned in the Red Sea. The deep waters gushed over them. They sank to the bottom like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, smashes the enemy. In the greatness of your majesty, you overthrow those who rise against you. You unleash your blazing fury. It consumes them like straw. At the blast of your breath, the waters piled up. The surging water stood straight like a wall. In the heart of the sea, the deep waters became hard. The enemy boasted, I will chase them and catch up with them. I will plunder them and consume them. I will flash my sword. My powerful hand will destroy them. But you blew with your breath, and the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you among the gods, O Lord, glorious in holiness, awesome in splendor, performing great wonders? You raised your right hand, and the earth swallowed your enemies, our enemies. With your unfailing love, you lead the people you have redeemed. In your might, you guide them to your sacred home. The peoples hear and tremble. Anguish grips those who live in Philistia. The elders of Edom are terrified. The nobles of Moab tremble. All who live in Canaan melt away. Terror and dread fall upon them. The power of your arm makes them lifeless as stone. Until you, your people pass by, O Lord, until the people you purchase pass by, you will bring them in and plant them on your own mountain. The place, O Lord, reserved for your own dwelling. The sanctuary, O Lord, that your hands have established. The Lord will reign forever and ever. When Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and charioteers rushed into the sea, the Lord brought the water crashing down on them. But the people of Israel had walked through the middle of the sea on dry ground. Then Miriam the prophet, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine and led all the women as they played their tambourines and danced. And Miriam sang this song. Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. He has hurled both horse and rider into the sea. Bitter water at Marah. Then Moses led the people of Israel away from the Red Sea, and they moved out into the desert of Shur. They traveled in this desert for three days without finding any water. When they came to the oasis of Marah, the water was too bitter to drink. So they called the place Marah, which means bitter. Then the people complained and turned against Moses. What are we going to drink? They demanded. So Moses cried out to the Lord for help, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. Moses threw it into the water, and this made the water good to drink. It was there at Marah that the Lord set before him them the following decree as a standard to test their faithfulness to him. He said, if you will listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, obeying his commands and keeping all of his decrees, then I will not make you suffer any of the disease I sent on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. After leaving Marah, the Israelites traveled to the, onto the oasis of Elam, where they found 12 springs and 70 palm trees. They camped there beside the water. Exodus 16, manna and quail from heaven. Then the whole community of Israel set out from Elam and journeyed into the wilderness of Sin between Elam and Mount Sinai. Sinai. They arrived there on the 15th day of the second month, one month after leaving the land of Egypt. There too, the whole community of Israel complained about Moses and Aaron. If only the Lord had killed us back in Egypt, they moaned. There we sat around. Oh, there we sat around pots filled with meat and ate all the bread we wanted but now you have brought us into this wilderness to starve us all to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, 
Look, I'm going to rain down food from heaven for you. Each day the people can go out and pick up as much food as they need for that day. I will test them in this to see whether or not they will follow my instructions. On the sixth day, they will gather food. And when they prepare it, there will be twice as much as usual. So Moses and Aaron said to all the people of Israel, by evening, you will realize it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. In the morning, you will see the glory of the Lord because he has heard your complaints, which are against him, not against us. What have we done that we, you should complain about us? Then Moses added, the Lord will give you meat to eat in the evening and bread to satisfy you in the morning. For he has heard all of your complaints against him. What have we done? Yes, your complaints are against the Lord, not against us. Then Moses said to Aaron, announce this to the entire community of Israel. Present yourselves before the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole community of Israel, they looked out toward the wilderness. Then they could see the awesome glory of the Lord in the cloud. Then the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the Israelites' complaints. Now tell them, in the evening you will have meat to eat, and in the morning you will have all the bread you want. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. That evening, vast numbers of quail flew in and covered the camp. And the next morning, the area around the camp was wet with dew. When the dew evaporated, a flaky substance as fine as frost blanketed the ground. The Israelites were puzzled when they saw it. What is it? They asked each other. They had no idea what it was. And Moses told them, it is the food the Lord has given you to eat. These are the Lord's instructions. Each household should gather as much as it needs. Pick up two quarts for each person in your tent. So the people of Israel did as they were told. Some gathered a lot, some only a little. But when they measured it out, everyone had just enough. Those who gathered a lot had nothing left over. And those who gathered only a little had enough. Each family had just what it needed. Then Moses told them, do not keep any of it until morning. But some of them didn't listen and kept some of it until morning. But by then it was full of maggots and had a terrible smell. Moses was very angry with them. After this, the people gathered the food morning by morning, each family according to its need. And as the sun became hot, the flakes they had not picked up melted and disappeared. On the sixth day, they gathered twice as much as usual, four quarts for each person instead of two. Then all the leaders of the community came and asked Moses for an explanation. He told them, this is what the Lord commanded. Tomorrow will be a day of complete rest, a holy Sabbath day set apart for the Lord. So bake or broil as much as you want today and set aside what is left for tomorrow. So they put some aside until morning, just as Moses had commanded. And in the morning, the leftover food was wholesome and good without maggots or odor. Moses said, eat this food today for today is the Sabbath day dedicated to the Lord. There will be no food on the ground today. You may gather the food for six days, but the seventh day is the Sabbath. There will be no food on the ground that day. Some of the people went out anyway on the seventh day, but they found no food. The Lord asked Moses, how long will these people refuse to obey my commands and instructions? They must realize that the Sabbath is the Lord's gift to you. That is why he gives you two days supply on the sixth day, so there'll be enough for two days. On the Sabbath day, you much, must each stay in your place. Do not go out to pick food on the seventh day. So the people did not gather any food on the seventh day. The Israelites called the food manna. It was white like coriander seed, coriander seed, and it tasted like honey wafers. Then Moses said, this is what the Lord has commanded. Fill a two-quart container with manna to preserve it for your descendants. Then later generations will be able to see the food I gave you in the wilderness when I set you free from Egypt. Moses said to Aaron, get a jar and fill it with two quarts of manna. Then put it in a sacred place before the Lord to preserve it for all future generations. Aaron did just as the Lord had commanded Moses. He eventually placed it in the Ark of the Covenant in front of the stone tablets inscribed with the terms of the covenant. So the people of Israel ate manna for 40 years until they arrived at the land where they would settle. They ate manna until they came to the border of the land of Canaan. The container used to measure the manna was an omer, which was one-tenth of an ephah. It held about two quarts. Leviticus 11. Ceremonially clean and unclean animals. Then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, give the following instruction to the people of Israel. Of all the land animals, these are the ones you may use for food. You may eat any animal that has come 
completely split hooves and chews the cud. You may not, however, eat the following animals that have split hooves or that chew the cud, but have, but not both. The camel chews the cud, but does not have a split hoof, so it is ceremonially unclean for you. The hyrax chews the cud, but does not have split hooves, so it is unclean. The hare chews the cud, but does not have split hooves, so it is unclean. The pig has evenly split hooves, but does not chew the cud, so it is unclean. You may not eat the meat of these animals or even touch their carcasses. They are ceremonially unclean for you. Of all the marine animals, these are the ones you may use for food. You may eat anything from the water if it has both fins and scales, whether taken from salt water or from streams. But you must never eat animals from the sea or from rivers that do not have both fins and scales. They are detestable to you. This applies both to little creatures that live in shallow water and to all creatures that live in deep water. They will always be detestable to you. You must never eat their meat or even touch their dead bodies. Any marine animal that does not have both fins and scales is detestable to you. These are the birds that are detestable to you. You must never eat them. The griffin vulture, the bearded vulture, the black vulture, the kite, falcons of all kinds, ravens of all kinds, the eagle owl, the short-eared owl, the seagull, hawks of all kinds, the little owl, the cormorant, the great owl, the barn owl, the desert owl, the Egyptian vulture, the stork, herons of all kinds, the hoopoe, and the bat. You must not eat winged insects that walk along the ground. They are detestable to you. You may, however, eat winged insects that walk along the ground and have jointed legs so they can jump. These insects you are permitted to eat in include all kinds of locusts, bald locusts, crickets, and grasshoppers. All other winged insects that walk along the ground are detestable to you. The following creatures will make you ceremonially unclean. If any of you touch the carcasses, you'll be defiled until evening. If you pick up their carcasses, you must wash your clothes and you remain defiled until evening. Any animal that has split hooves that does not that are not evenly divided or that does not chew the cud is unclean for you. If you touch the carcass of such an animal, you'll be defiled. Of the animals that walk on all fours, those that have paws are unclean. If you touch the carcass of such an animal, you'll be defiled until evening. If you pick up its carcass, you must watch your clothes and you'll remain defiled until evening. These animals are unclean for you. Of the small animals that scurry along the ground, these are unclean for you. The mole rat, the rat, large lizards of all kinds, the gecko, the monitor lizard, the common lizard, the sand lizard, and the chameleon. All these small animals are unclean for you. If any of you touch the dead body of such an animal, you will be defiled until evening. If such an animal dies and falls on something, that object will be unclean. This is true whether the object is made of wood, cloth, leather, or burlap. Whatever its use, you must dip it in water and it will remain defiled until evening. After that, it will be ceremonially clean and may be used again. If such an animal falls into a clay pot, everything in the pot will be defiled and the pot must be smashed. If the water from the, such a container spills on any food, the food will be defiled and any beverage in such a container will be defiled. Any object on which the carcass of such an animal falls will be defiled. If it is an oven or hearth, it must be destroyed for it is defiled and you must treat it accordingly. However, if the carcass of such an animal falls into a spring or cistern, the water will still be clean, but anyone who touches the carcass will be defiled. If the carcass falls on seed grain to be planted in the field, the seed will be considered clean, but the seed, if the seed is wet when the carcass falls on, the, on it, the seed will be defiled. If any mat, if an animal you are permitted to eat dies and you touch its carcass, you'll be defiled until evening. If you eat any of its meat or carry away its carcass, you must wash your clothes and you will remain defiled until evening. All small animals that scurry along the ground are detestable and you must never eat them. This includes all animals that slither along on their bellies, as well as those with four legs and those with many feet. All such animals that scurry along the ground are detestable and you must never eat them. Do not defile yourselves by touching them. You must not make yourself ceremonially unclean because of them. For I am the Lord your God. You must consecrate yourselves and be holy because I am holy. So do not defile yourselves with any of these small animals that scurry along the ground. For I, the Lord, am the one who brought you from the land of Egypt that I might be your God. 
Therefore, you must be holy because I am holy. These are the instructions regarding land animals, birds, marine creatures, and animals that scurry along the ground. By these instructions, you will know what is unclean and clean, and which animals may be eaten and which may not be eaten. Psalm 71. O oh Lord, I have come to you for protection. Don't let me be disgraced. Save me and rescue me, for you do what is right. Turn your ear to listen to me and set me free. Be my rock of safety where I can always hide. Give the order to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. My God, rescue me from the power of the wicked, from the clutches of cruel oppressors. O oh Lord, you alone are my hope. I trusted you, O oh Lord, from childhood. Yes, you have been with me from my birth. From my mother's womb, you have cared for me. No wonder I am always praising you. My life is an example to many because you have been my strength and protection. That is why I can never stop praising you. I declare your glory all day long. And now in my old age, don't set me aside. Don't abandon me when my strength is failing. For my enemies are whispering against me. They are plotting together to kill me. They say God has abandoned him. Let's go and get him. For no one will help him now. Oh God, don't stay away. My God, please hurry to help me. Bring disgrace and destruction on my accusers. Humiliate and shame those who want to harm me. But I will keep on hoping for your help. I will praise you more and more. I will tell everyone about your righteousness. All day long, I will proclaim your saving power. Though I am not skilled with words, I will praise your mighty deeds. O sovereign Lord, I will tell everyone that you alone are just. O God, you have taught me from my earliest childhood earliest childhood, and I constantly tell others about the wonderful things you do. Now that I am old and gray, do not abandon me, O God. Let me proclaim your power to this new generation, your mighty miracles to all who come after me. Your righteous, O God, reaches to the highest heavens. Your righteousness, O God, reaches to the highest heavens. You have done such wonderful things. Who can compare with you, O God? You have allowed me to suffer much hardship but you will restore me to life again and lift me up from the depths of the earth. You will restore me to even greater honor and comfort me once again. Then I will praise you with music on the harp because you are faithful to your promises, O oh my God. I will sing praises to you with a lyre, a holy one of Israel. I will shout for joy and sing your praises for you have ransomed me. I will tell about your righteous deeds all day long for everyone who tried to hurt me has been shamed and humiliated. And now the Lord's Prayer, uh, again, on day 36. Um, I'm reading day 36, but I am doing this on May 27th, uh, which is actually Ronan's third birthday today. So happy birthday, buddy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Dear Lord, direct our paths this day through your Holy Spirit. Your child, your servant is listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>